In the beginning, I was charging my Tesla Model 3 at home with the included 120 volt adapter and a 50 foot extension cord. I was able to plug in the cord through the window instead of plugging it into an outdoor socket exposed to the element. It was an easy and quick way to charge my car during the night. I realized quickly that the connection between the extension cable and the Tesla adapter was dangerously exposed to rain and could easily short circuit. Since this was my only option of charging, I had to stick with it for a while until I found a good enough solution. 120 volt charging also took too long, so I figured that I should get a 240 volt extension cable that I can quickly charge with. The cable, however, was expensive and not safe to use outside as it would still be exposed with the connection it had to the adapter. So I started thinking if I were to extend the adapter cable itself instead of using an extension cord. It will cost mo much less than to buy a 240 volt extension cable and that solution would remove the exposed junction making it much safer to use. I started this project by buying a NEMA 1430 adapter from Tesla as it was not included with the car. I then purchased a 9 meter 8 gauge electrical cable good enough to handle the amperage that the car needed. For $60 Canadian from electrical supply store which was much cheaper than Home Depot. My plan was to cut open the adapter and solder the extension cord in between the two ends. But I found that there were small wires inside that appeared to carry a signal from each end of the adapter. After noticing that two out of the four wires were just there and not being used, I pulled them out and connected the remaining ones to a component tester. The reading that the tester gave me was that the signal came from a two-way diode, but was most likely a confirmation chip that appeared to have the same response to the input signal. I figured out that the chip must be in the plug because that made sure that nobody could modify or tamper with the plug, but not me. After 30 minutes of excavating the plug with a Dremel, I found the chip. I extracted it and wanted to see what would happen if I didn't connect it while charging. I temporarily charged that car with 220 volts from a two separate 120 volts outlet. But the car simply said that it, there was a fault somewhere and reduced the charging amps from 24 down to 5 as a safety measure. I exposed the wire from the cable that I bought and soldered it to both ends using a Hako FX100, making sure that there was enough lead for a high amp connection and not to cause an overheating problem. After soldering the cable with the end that connects to the mobile connector, I filled the space in between the three wires at that end with a liquid rubber and then shrunk a heat shrink tube around it to fully seal and protect the joint from the elements. On the other end with the four nodes, I needed to replace all the plastic that I removed from the, around the prongs so they can fill in the space and insulate the wires. I first filled in 80% of the space with fiberglass filler as it would not be cheap to use that much good quality epoxy instead. I then topped off the plug with professional epoxy in order to properly seal everything and then I used a thin layer of liquid rubber for texture and to have some grip. Now that's all done, I won't have to worry about potential execution as the connection to the mobile connector is already sealed and the other end is inside my house and I get much faster charging. As you can see, I have safely and successfully modified and extended the adapter that was originally about 10 inches long to about 9 meters, eliminating the need for an expensive and unsafe extension cable. Instead of dealing with 5 km per hour of charging, I now get almost 40, meaning that my average charging time for charging the car from half to full only needed a couple of hours instead of entire night, which is sometimes a real lifesaver. Thank you for watching.